What's going on, y'all? It's Kolev, and I'm showing you which sponsors you should be using in Spectre Divide. Let's get to it. Just like other hero style, class style uh, shooters like this, every body's gonna be different. They're gonna have their own strength and weaknesses, and sometimes even synergies in this game is pretty unique in the way that it does use those synergies. Whenever you combine some abilities that some characters have with your Spectre, which is your clone, uh, per se in this game. So the first monster that we're going to be looking at in this video is going to be Pinnacle International. It's going to be pretty much the baseline sponsor, the baseline character class of the game. It's going to have your most standard type of build uh, with that being grenades, flashbangs, so on and so forth. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to have is your grenade. And this grenade doesn't work like a traditional grenade. It doesn't just kind of explode. It actually just releases small explosions around a certain radius. So if we throw this right here, you can see that it explodes in a small circle. Now you can also obviously lob it uh, for, you know, higher positions if you're trying to get over, but you want to get it into a, a shorter, shorter distance from where you're at. Then you obviously you can lob it it will simply do the exact same thing explode in the exact same way the next thing that we have is our flashbang now the flashbang is a pretty different in this game in the sense that it not only flashes you but it can also flash your teammates but you can also avoid being flashed by looking away so as you can see it can be right here for the flash and even from that distance it blinds you a good amount right but if I get this flash, I throw it again, then I look away. It doesn't flash me for that long, right? I looked pretty much to the side. So it, obviously you can still hit a little bit of your peripherals. Finally, we throw the flash one more time and we look completely behind us. It is the uh, lowest amount of time that you will get flash per se uh, from the flash as well. So anytime you use these, definitely let your team know like, hey, about to flash so-and-so, I'm about to flash this area, about to flash corner, about to flash tank, whatever it is, uh, so that they could be prepared to potentially look away if they are a little bit close to where you're throwing the flash. Finally, we're gonna have our last ability that's gonna be our adrenaline. Starting so adrenaline. if you are uh, you know, damaged, obviously this is gonna heal you for a certain amount of time. You can still shoot your pistol, so you can still definitely get shots in. Um, but you know you will not be able to use any other guns that you have uh, during the time that you're healing so this could be a cool situation where you know somebody's around the corner you know you're gonna probably take some hits so you can kind of heal yourself while still engaging the enemy so it definitely gives uh, you know a lot of a lot of scenarios that it can be useful not only uh, obviously on the defensive side for healing you but on the, on the offensive side almost making you like a tank in per se now coming back here and just getting into the details of everything the, the grenade will explode eight times 40 damage each so this can definitely kill somebody pretty quickly and kill a multitude of people if they are in you know close proximity to each other the adrenaline link will stem you for at least 80 health over 10 seconds uh, so keep that in mind whenever you're healing it's not gonna heal you all the way but it will heal you up to 80 uh, up to 80 health for 10 seconds and on top of that you get enhanced vision and you ignore, you know, weapon sort of penalties, you know, getting shot, whatever, flinches, things like that. So like I said, it really does go in tandem with using that weapon as a sort of shield as you're healing to go around and, you know, piece people up that may be around a corner where you know you'll probably get hit. You can use it in a scenario like that. And finally, for the flash grenade, you will throw a grenade that explodes after 1.6 seconds. Now, here's the little twist on it that almost every single one of these characters have in, to some capacity is... If you underhand throw this, it will explode faster. So that is something, you know, that is something that's pretty important to know. Whenever you're in the heat of battle, you're trying to get a flash in really quickly, and you may be pretty, you know, in close proximity to somebody, then you could just do a quick underhand throw, you know, maybe look away, run away really quickly, they get flashed. And a cool thing about this game is that when someone does get flashed, you can visually see that they're flashed. Let me show you. So if we do a quick underhand throw, you know somebody's right there, boom, they're flashed and we can visually see that they are flash. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've never seen anything like that in, in a game before, so I think it makes this the, the strategy and the use of the flash even more um, useful, for lack of better words, because now you can actually tell that, yeah, they are messed up, they're flashed, go in there, push. And obviously this can hit multiple people. It won't just hit one person, it can hit their whole team if they're in that area. If I were to give an overall rating of Pinnacle International, I would have to say he's probably a solid 
you know, somewhere between a B and, and an A, so maybe like a B plus. He's a really solid, they're really, really solid sponsor to use. They have pretty much everything, a whole kit. You got, you got the uh, offensive capabilities of the grenade, um, the team base capability of the flash, as well as the self healing capability of a healing style character. They pretty much cover the whole basis. I think it's a very uh, user friendly character to people that you know, have never played this game before and they just want something that's pretty familiar. I think this pretty much fits right up that alley. The next we're going to be looking at is Morgan United. Now Morgan United is definitely one of the sneakier characters in this game. A lot of their abilities actually cannot be seen. So that makes them pretty powerful uh, to go against other players with uh, as you can place traps pretty much. That's pretty much how this character is built around basically you know putting traps down and sneaking in to the enemy defenses and going from there uh, and in any case the enemy tries to sneak up on you they won't be able to because you will have traps that maybe will be covering your back so our first ability is going to be a smoke smoke so it's going to basically create a dome of smoke that you can run into to hide that you also cannot see out of so that's important to know uh, but they also cannot see inside of. They can shoot within the smoke, so you're not, you know, completely protected. It's not a shield or anything like that. But um, it is something that you know people can shoot through, and that you can cover and possibly kind of uh, rever revert attention to. So you can act like you're going somewhere when you're really not. Now, another cool aspect of this is it has an alternative way of using it. You can actually not only throw the smoke, but also throw your specter puck inside of it. So say, you know, I know somebody's over there and I want to get closer, right? I can switch over. I can right click, go over to the other mode, <laughs> throw it over. Boom, it's there. But now also is my specter. So now I'm inside the cloud. Now you, have, you definitely have to be careful with this. You know, the game is newer, so people might not necessarily understand this capability all the time. But as time goes on, I'm sure people are going to start getting it and they might just start pre-firing the smoke uh, right out the gate. But again, once people do understand this, that's when the mind games really can, can start happening. So definitely something that is useful and a lot of people won't be expecting it. But like I said, as time goes on, people probably will. So the next thing we have is gonna be the meltdown. Now this is gonna be a grenade again that's invisible. So this can you can throw something like this around meltdown. the corners like this. They won't be able to see it. And as soon as they step on it, they start taking damage. As you can see, it does about 10 damage per second. So it's something that can definitely stack up really quickly. You'll know when it comes up and you can finish them off pretty easily, right? Finally, his last ability, um, which has a massive AOE effect, which is going to be his hidden grasp ability. Now, this is basically just going to slow down uh, people that go by this, right? So you get, again, how you would do the uh, acidic effect, you would place it somewhere like that. They'll go over it and then it will slow them down. Now, this is a pretty strong trap. It slows you down quite heavily. And since there's a lack of movement in this game, you can easily know when the trap is triggered and take them out accordingly, right? So going really quickly in the actual details, you throw a grenade, creates a cloud of smoke for 14 seconds. And the alternative, you can throw that smoke with your puck as well. Meltdown is going to create an area of effect, which is going to damage players for a total of 168 damage over seven seconds. And then Hidden Grasp is going to deploy a track that cloaks itself on deployment and explodes an enemy if they get too close to it. That's also another effect that I did not mention. So if they do end up getting a little bit too close to it, they will explode from it. Now, this is something that you can shoot. So you can shoot the uh, the grass once it appears. But if you are too close and you don't know where it is, you could just pretty much run right into it and take some damage. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid class. It, it's you know pretty underutilized, I feel. I don't see a lot of people using this. Um, I think it's definitely a really good complement to a team as far as being able to cover your flank. Um, I would definitely give this somewhere, I would say I would give this about a B. I would say it has a lot of defensive capabilities, but definitely is lacking in the offensive capabilities, as well as there is no healing type ability here as well. Uh, really the only offensive ability that it kind of has is being able to smoke shift with your specter uh, to give kind of a jump scare to the enemy from that perspective. But other than that, uh, it's kind of primarily defensive, and I think as a team, it could be a pretty good asset, but overall, I'll give it a B. Next, we're looking at Bloom Technologies, and it something it's... Next, we're looking at Bloom Technologies, and this might be one of the best sponsors in the entire game, as it covers a breadth of pretty much everything that you need 
uh, a you know hero and his abilities to pretty much do. So, so for the first ability, we're going to have the shield. Now this shield is completely blocks projectiles up to a certain amount of damage. Every quadrant of this shield has its own health pool. So with a pistol, it's gonna take about six shots before it explodes pretty much. So you can definitely use this as a way to give yourself cover to get to another area because obviously if I'm moving, you know, over here from over here, then um, they're not gonna pretty much gun down just one of the quadrants. They're gonna pretty much shoot along the base of it, right? So you kind of get more value if you're trying to get to some, some somewhere kind of quickly, but you also can use it just to get quick visual on where an enemy might be in this case right here. But you can also strategically place it somewhere where you're kind of just inside of them. So if I knew he was right there, I put it right here. I can squeeze in right. Oh, I can squeeze in right here to easily take him out. Right. So just kind of a few ways you can think about it. And obviously you could just keep on shooting through it until you eventually shoot your enemy. Um, but you just have to be careful that they can obviously do the same to you. So there's defense. You have a, a defensive uh, and offensive even capability from them as well. But let's look at their next ability. So this is pretty much going to allow you not only to heal yourself, but also heal your teammates from a distance and a, a pretty large distance, by the way. You just have to have visual sight of them. If you wanted to heal yourself, then you would simply just right click and you will end up you know, healing yourself. If you wanted to heal your teammate, then you would just left click on your teammate and then boom, that will heal them. Now, whenever you are healing yourself or healing others, that not only heals yourself, but also your specter. So, and the same thing for your teammates as well. So extremely, extremely powerful ability. Finally, similar to a, the smoke grenade that we saw earlier, uh, we have essentially a smoke grenade as well, but the smoke grenade also does damage. So anybody that gets caught in this is going to be taking damage from these little wasps that you see in here. So overall, you're not only covering your defensive, but you also have offensive capabilities and healing not only for yourself, but for your teammates. I think that Bloom Technologies is the best character right now in the game. If you do not have a Bloom Technology uh, sponsor within your team, I highly recommend you at least have one because having somebody that, that has such a wide variety of things that they can do during combat, I think is the most advantageous thing uh, in a game, in a shooter, especially like this. So if we look at their abilities, we can see that Hex Barrier blocks bullets that are made up into four sections with 150 health each panel. So pretty important to know, based on the amount of damage that your gun, uh, you know, is able to put out, snipers might be able to one shot this, right? So definitely have to keep that in mind. So it's a 30 second recharge once it's placed. So it's something that can be used again, which is also important to know. We have the twin mend ability, which this was the, the healing ability that I showed you. Heal a damaged ally and their specter for 80 health over 10 seconds. Now, this is the important thing. Now, you get the most value out of it by healing your teammates as it heals 80 health for 10 seconds for your teammate. For you, it is half that. So that's, that's very important to know. You should only be really be healing yourself if you need to be in a firefight and your teammates aren't as damaged as you, or if you are extremely damaged and you really need to be in that fight, then obviously use it for yourself. And then the swarm grenade, like I said, releases a swarm that does 100 health damage over 12 seconds and obviously can hide you like a smoke grenade would as well. Now, the last of the you know free sponsors, we have Riker Industries. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna kind of say that Riker Industries is actually the weakest out of all the sponsors in the game. I can't <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. I don't really recommend using them that much, especially if you could use these three. There are a lot of things that Riker Industries um, has to that are potentially good, but there's one thing that kind of puts them behind. So the first thing is gonna be a wave scan. So you pretty much can throw a wave scan. So wave scans. That can ricochet like that, or you can throw it directly somewhere to pretty much start scanning. Now, the cool thing about this is that what it does is it identifies enemies. It doesn't give you their silhouette, but it identifies generally where they're gonna be, right? The problem with this, and I might as well just say it now, and the rest of his abilities is that they can easily be shot before they even go off. So if I were to throw that same thing, wave scan running. Boom, someone sees it, boom. They can shoot it before it even goes off. Now you can see the interval of pulses, the first pulse is very quick and the second two are pretty sparsed out. So, you know, if somebody's fast enough and they see the, the, 
the thing hit the wall, they can shoot it, knock it down, and now you basically wasted, you know, that that specific device. And on top of that, you only get one of these. Gathering weight so you get one of those per round and you're pretty much done. So it's not really worth it, you know, in my opinion. The next is going to be this proximity mine. You can throw it like that. And once somebody gets near it, it will explode. You know, she will shoot out little explosions. Let me show you right here. Fine. It detected somebody, so now it starts, you know, pulsing and doing damage. So not only did that not do a lot of damage, but like the rest, like what I said earlier, you can simply just shoot it because you can see it, right? So it 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 almost seems like it's pretty useless as well. And then finally, you got uh, you know one of these guys, which are also visible, by the way. But they will essentially Placing slow. But they will essentially slow down an enemy once you know the sentry sees them. But again, this is something that can be shot from <laughs> super far away, right? It can be exploded pretty easily, and it's pretty easy to get out of sight of something like this. So, I, I pretty much just can't recommend this sponsor at all. I, I think there's a lot of things that you know Morgan United does. It's like far better than what this class could ever hope to do. Now, I think the wave scan ability is nice. Uh, I, th I think that all of these have you know, potential to be pretty good, but the fact that they're all visible, the fact that they can be you know, shot so easily and destroyed pretty much one tap with the wave scan, the fact you only have one wave scan and one arc sentry, it just kind of makes it like, why am I even using this character? There's three other characters that I could be playing right now. So I think this character, honestly, is going to be at a D tier for me. I, I don't recommend using this character. I hope that they buff it to some capacity, maybe add more pulses, more wave scans, make them go a little bit more frequent, uh, maybe give you another one. I, I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. But as the current state of this of this sponsor right now is, D tier, I would not recommend. Now we're moving into the you know pseudo pay tier, pseudo grind tier of characters in the game. And this is when the character style and what they do gets a little bit more interesting and definitely kind of pulls away from the you know the four free one. So for the first ability we're gonna have is gonna be a sort of buff. It's gonna give you a plus 15% fire rate when land? it's active and also has another ability it puts down a little pin and whenever wherever that pin is you can actually teleport your specter too so this can be pretty good obviously whenever you're throwing a puck and trying to move your puck around it does take a while for your specter to get you know to a certain area so if you have an idea of how you want to push an enemy and your specter is pretty far away we can simply activate this that will uh you know obviously go over to your to the area that you want to you know fight in and then your specter will promptly move over there right now on top of this you gain that 15 percent you know rapid fire bonus so that will also allow you to you know obviously kill enemies faster and during this if you do end up killing an enemy it will reset that timer so you can technically go on like a crazy killing spree potentially with uh this enabled using so that's something land. you definitely want to keep in mind when using this ability the next ability is going to be sort of a pushing type tactical ability where you can essentially Sector put out wall, a wall easy. now this wall will not cover you it does not deflect bullets but you can't see so you can use it as a diversion uh you can use it and push behind you know with your team but just know that you can't uh that they can shoot through it and you can shoot through it as well so it could go both ways for sure now you can do it Sector in wall. a slower you know if you're kind of pushing and you want to maybe keep their attention more you can do it that way or you can do a faster variation and it will obviously go way faster. Now you could do these back to back, there's no limit. Uh, you can be amped up when you do it too. You can do a fast one and a slow one. There's a lot of ways you can combo it, but just know it does not block bullets and you can get killed from it. So that's something you definitely keep in mind with this ability. And finally, we have the Nano Swarm ability. Now this pretty much is a little Saphir that will do damage once it attaches to an enemy. So I see somebody over there, I can throw it. Once it targets them, boom, sucks onto them and pretty much just drains their life, right? And um, it could kill, but it doesn't do enough damage to kill just from itself. So they would definitely have to be weak. One thing to note about this, though, is that it can be shot. So, you know, if the enemy sees it coming near them and, you, you know, it's, you're pretty far away, they can easily just piece it up before it even gets to them and they'll be safe from there. But you can use that as a distraction. There's a lot of different ways you can use it but it is important to know that it can be killed. I think overall, this is a pretty solid character. I'll definitely give it a, you know, 
you know, B to B plus sort of uh, rank sort of tier. It covers a, you know, good bit of offensive capability with the dual amp, as well as defensive capability with the vector wall, as well as being able to teleport your specter around. I think it gives you a lot of ways to be in the fight and also defend yourself while you're in the fight as well. I'm aware that every character does not have a healing ability. They do not have to have a healing ability, but I think having the whole breadth of all of them is what truly makes a character you know top tier i don't know if i tiered the bloom technologies but that's definitely you know an a to s tier character in my opinion uh, definitely one of the best that the game has to offer i think this for sure easily a b b plus tier so you, you won't go wrong you know, using a character like this he can definitely cause a lot of distractions and uh you know they might think you're pushing from one way and really your team's coming around the flank and taking out the team from there so vector dynamics B, B plus. Continuing with the sort of, continuing with the topic of, you know, sort of distractions, we have Ghost Link Collective. Now, Ghost Link Collective has a lot of abilities that, you know, are made to kind of deter attention and bring attention to, to other areas as well, falsely, so you can kind of get the piece up on, you know, your enemy whenever you're getting into, you know, different firefights. The first ability, pretty simple. It's going to be a super, super long Placing wall. Partition. It doesn't go all the way but a really, really long wall to basically give you and your team cover. So, you know, similar to like what I was saying with the Bloom Technologies and putting the shield down to help you get to somewhere, this will give you more range, Partitioning. right? More length of, you know, being able to protect yourself without, you know, actually absorbing bullets. So you can shoot through this and it goes both ways. They can shoot through it and you can shoot, it as, shoot through it as well. But I think the fact that you have not only two of these, Partition. you can use them back to back. You can use them Partition in weird ways. I don't, I don't know why you would ever do this. When they cross, that doesn't protect you from bullets either. But you know, you can give yourself a longer route, right? But say I needed to get over there, but I, I don't want to be seen. Then Partition you can simply up. do this. Y'all can start pushing as a team, get ready. And then boom, put another one. Now you made it completely without them really knowing what just happened. Now, obviously they know that you pushed, but they not they may not know that your entire team has pushed that area as well. The final thing to note about this Placing is partition. that if you do get close to it, it will distort your vision pretty, pretty bad. So if somebody was trying to run through the wall to, you know, to get the hit on you, they will potentially, you know, be, their vision will be distorted for a little bit. So you can maybe get the jump on them, but you can also obviously affect yourself um, going through it as well. So one thing to note with that. So next we have the dupes. Now this works pretty similar to how it works like in uh, like Apex, for example. You press dupe the button active. and you will have a dupe that will come out. Now, if the enemy shoots the dupe, it will actually reveal their location. So it's pretty important, not only from, you know, a defensive perspective, but also an offensive because now you actually know where they are. But there's a few ways that you can actually deploy your dupe, right? So simply by just standing or running, you can put the dupe out and it will run the direction that you're running. Next, you can also you know, make it maybe a little bit more believable Making by a putting a dupe while you're crouched and the dupe will also be crouched. Another way you can do it if you want a dupe to be stationary, you want it to be in one spot, then you can actually, if you have the space for it, right, you, you um, still have slots available to be actually dupe, you can throw your puck. And now wherever you throw your puck, a dupe will also be in that same exact area. And not only that, but it will also be in the same position that you left your uh, your, your guide in the first place so pretty important to uh to know there's a lot of different ways that you can do it there's a lot of ways that you can kind of you know fake the enemy out when utilizing the dupe and like i said as well if they do end up getting shot then boom you know where the actual enemy is so pretty pretty important pretty uh sneaky of an ability and when we start seeing that more i think it's going to get a lot of people um pretty quickly and finally we have this sort of distortion grenade uh, so Dropping when you throw zone. it, it'll go, and whoever is in that radius will essentially get this crazy, distorted-looking type of thing. Uh, now, obviously, you can still see people within uh, its area of effect, right? Throwing dead zone. Let me just throw this again. I can't see anything outside, but I can see, you know, other players that are in here. And when you look at it from this perspective, you can see everything within there. Um, so I think this is definitely something that you would want to catch somebody off guard with maybe if you're a little bit far away if you're able to throw it you know from a distance catch them then maybe have a sniper get ready go piece them up while they're kind of freaking out they don't really know what's happening um there's a lot of different ways you can do it the cool thing is you know once it go once it lands on the ground your 
and, and the person's inside of it, they're pretty much screwed. Nothing they can really do, but Good just try to, you know, run out whatever direction they think they should run uh, based on wherever the grenade fell. And that's pretty much it. So it's a little bit less effective than a flash in a way, right? Because it's AOE is definitely smaller. And uh, the fact that they can still sort of see uh, they have some sort of vision, you know, definitely plays into that same fact. But it, it is something cool. You do have multiple of them, so you can do different things with it. And you can use it as diversions as well. However, you really think that you would want to do it. I think ultimately a flash still is a better alternative than this grenade is. Overall, I think Ghost Link Collective has some pretty cool abilities. Um, a lot of them are really more defensive. There's not really a lot of offensive capability here. Um, and no healing at all so i think i'll probably pretty much have to put this around a b minus to a c i think that a lot of the abilities have potential to you know make some pretty cool plays and uh help your team out in some uh, you know very particular situations i think overall it doesn't really cover the entire breadth of what you want a character to actually be able to do within a game so i think again ghost collect ghostly collective b minus c and next we have mu robotics now there's a lot of very different and interesting mechanics that this character has and even there's a mechanic in here that a lot of people don't even know is actually in the game um so let's get right into it so the first ability is going to be called patches now it's a little robot that's essentially going to be able to heal you and your team over a pretty pretty decently large radius now you can simply left click the robot will hover and will heal you and your team over this radius and it will move for about 12 seconds before it despawns. Now, pretty good by itself, right? If you're going for a push, and you know the enemy's gonna be there and you wanna push as a team, this could be something that will be super, super advantageous. 80 health in total for you, know, you and your teammates in this little bubble as you're just going in there piecing people up while they're shooting you as well. So it could be pretty good. Obviously, if you're getting hit in the head, then it's not gonna be enough to heal you, but you know, it could be a cool little push mechanic, right? But if you didn't wanna push and you just wanted to quickly heal you and your team, then simply right click, boom, stationary patch is placed, and then boom, you're there, you're healing, and you're gonna be all good to go. The next ability is definitely different, something that I've never seen in the game before, but it's it works basically like a flash grenade with a shorter radius, and I'll show you, you know, in a moment. So if our enemy's right there, what I can actually do is some like wanted bullet maneuvering type type thing, basically based on the cursor on your screen. So I can simply you know right click move my cursor in and it will curve and flash our enemy so the one thing to note about this is it won't flash them or distort them as long as a direct flash would even if i was right oops well that was the wrong thing that was the bill is going to show next even if i point blank throw this at him he's going to get flashed not for as long as a flash would so a direct flash will flash you for about four seconds there's no specific amount of time that this essentially flashes you for but it's definitely not four seconds. I'll say it's probably around two to 2.5. And the distance, like I said, isn't as far as a flash would. So if I was way back here, it will go. It'll flash him, but it will go away relatively quickly as well. And it's the same amount of flash no matter how far you are, no matter how, how close you are. So yeah, as you know, a, di a direct flash is four seconds, but you know, a flash that's a little bit you know, further away from him is maybe around two, 1.5, something like that. So if I was right here, Still get him a little bit but again it's gonna go away relatively quick now obviously i can throw a flash and hit him directly from right here and it's gonna be a four second so i think overall maybe a flash might be a little bit better right uh just because you get more value because you get more time of them being flashed than you would with something like this i think it's cool you can sort of curve it like that and go around corners but i think overall a regular flash you know i, I think does the job a little bit better the fact that you have two is also you know advantageous and you can also bring it down too, so you can go over stuff. I think it, it's a, applicability for what it is is cool, but I think it's a flash just does the job better. Now for the final ability, it's gonna be that dome thing that I kind of popped out a little bit earlier. Now this is essentially going to put down a dome. It's gonna be a 150 uh, health shield. That will last for 14 seconds. Now you can't shoot out of it, similar to the Bloom Technologies. And you know, once that health is gone, it's gone. But what it does is puts a permanent, an emphasis on that keyword permanent, fast deploy zone. Now pretty much what that allows you to do is recall your specter right here and it will take three times to half the time that it normally would to actually get to where you're throwing it. So 
if I were to, th so my spectre is over there, say I will put it right here, right next to it. One, two, three. So probably about 3.3 .3 seconds, something like that. I don't know. Let's go ahead and put him back. So he was right up here, put him there. And now let's do the same thing, but in the fast recall zone. One, two, so probably like 1.7 seconds, something like that, 1.8. I don't know, I'm just like making the numbers up in my head as I see it. But as you can visually see, it's a lot faster. It is extremely fast. Now this could be important for, you know, if the other team shifted from A to B and you need to get over to, you know, A really quickly, but your specter is over in B. Well, then you could, you know, put a recall zone for not only you, but also your team that is permanently gonna be there for the entire game. Not just that round, but the entire game until it's completely over. So emphasis on the keyword permanent is a pretty huge skill. It's a pretty advantageous skill for not only you and your team, and it can be used in a multitude of different ways. So you have two of these every single round. So I think it's pretty useful, man. It is definitely something that, you know, I don't see a lot of people taking advantage of, and it could just be the fact that it's, you know, a paid for a character, but um, for a grind for a character. But, you know, it is something that is unique to the game. And like I said, there's stuff like this even already in the game itself. And a lot of people don't really know what it is. Well, that's what it is. It's just a fast recall zone for your Spectre to spawn to. Overall, I think the Mew Robotics is the most unique character to the game and has, you know, some of the most unique abilities that I've seen in a game like this as well. This character is, you know, one of the few characters that actually lacks a lot of offensive abilities, but does have the defensive and healing capabilities that aren't seen in a lot of other characters as well. Now it does not have any offensive, it, or it's not that it doesn't have any offensive abilities, right? Because it does have something like the Dazzler that you can use offensively or use the Hyperdome, but you know, it just doesn't have anything like to the capacity that other characters do have. But with that being said, I want to say that this character is a solid B plus in my opinion. I think it does cover a decent breadth of you know all the abilities that you know a character should have to not only be able to heal yourself but also your team is massive healing in these types of games is huge 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 being able to flash on with the dazzler and then push in offensively is also you know a good little breach point that the character has as well as the hyper dome to be able to easily defend yourself in a little bit of a, a bubble and also like i said put that fast deploy zone um to be able to get your specters and your team specters to certain places that you might want them to be so overall b plus and finally, we get to the last character that also has some pretty unique abilities. I know this video has been going on pretty long, but I definitely want to cover all of these in detail so you can truly understand everything that these characters have. So let's get to this last one. Umbria Reconnaissance has a lot of, a lot of cool abilities and a lot of cool you know, little side abilities built in within them. So let's get right into it. So this character is pretty much the Reconnaissance character as the sponsor name would imply there's not a lot of offensive or defensive there's no healing capabilities i mean i guess you can you can say that some of these are offensive defensive inherently for being reconnaissance but nothing that would directly necessarily do damage or protect you um a lot of it is like the name suggests is very reconnaissance uh, reminiscent of right so this one right here is essentially going to throw out this little boomerang and wherever it sticks it's going to identify the people and it's the only one in the game that will actually give you the silhouette of the character as well. So not only it doesn't give you just a, a little snippet of where they might be, uh, it'll give you the whole thing. So it's there, it's in the radius, it hits them, boom, right? So pretty huge and everybody will see that. So it's, it's, it's pretty important and definitely a, a pretty advantageous thing to have. You have two of these, you, have, you actually have two of all of these, which is pretty important as well and pretty much wherever it sticks, it will it will go. The cool thing about this as well is, you know, once it sticks down, it cannot be exploded like the other little pulse thing that we saw earlier. Uh, once, it, once this touches the surface, it's in, boom, the radius happens and you will be able to see their outline from it. Now, the it doesn't last very long. It only lasts about 2.5 seconds, but it gives you, you know, a really good idea and where to shoot of where the uh, you, you know the actual enemy is going to be, so pretty huge there. The next thing is going to be this thing called a pulse finder. Now it's essentially going to be kind of like a heart rate or a, a heartbeat detector. It's not going to give you their entire silhouette like the other one did, but it's going to give you a pin of where they currently are. As you can see, it's right on top of their chest. So pretty important, and it lasts for a, quite a while. Now the only thing you can use while this is going on is your pistol, so you can definitely still kill people. You know, if you're getting those headshots. I'm pausing somebody. Oh, you're right there. Boom. Now you're dead. But 
you only can use your pistol for this. Finally, we have this little drone and essentially this drone is going to flash where uh, in the you know radius direction that you're throwing it in, it's right there, it comes up, will flash, then boom. Now the thing about this is that it can be shot. So it, as you can see, it, it did take a little bit of a little bit of time before it actually you know flashed before flying away. So see the radius is pretty far up to about right here. So that's a pretty that's a pretty good distance. And this is a full flash, so it's very equivalent to a flashbang. It will pretty much flash anybody with with. So it'll flash anybody that is in that radius, as you can see, boom, and everybody that's in there will get flashed. Now, I went through all these, but they also have another set of abilities on top, and it's really the only other one besides the smoke that actually utilizes your specter. So I have my specter right over there. It's, he may, we'll say for the scenario, he hears footsteps beyond this wall. He can't, he can't see it exactly, but he hears, you know, people walking over there that isn't us. What we can actually do, say we are, you know, somewhere right here. We can't see him either. Switch over to our specter and bring out our pulser. We can actually switch out of him and our specter will continue pulsing in, in that area. What we can do now is utilize our recon wing ability and it will automatically go to where they are. As long as you're looking at the marker, right? So say I'm over here, I see him, boom. Pulse, I see him right here, even behind a wall, boom, pulse, right? So super, super important. Do it again, Checking for pulses. boom, switch back. And I'm not even close to him, yet I can go over here, boom, identify him. Now I have the full visual. And I can do the same thing with the flash. The boom, go to my flash, and it does an AOE flash. Just like that. So wherever I look, and I sent out my flash drone, it does pretty much an aerial flash and it's AOE over that entire area. So extremely, extremely important. Definitely has its ability to, you know, offensive and defensively do things. Just none of it directly is that, right? So pretty, pretty huge, man. And definitely one of the most unique characters in the game. Probably the hardest character to actually utilize in a, in a way, uh, right? Because you know, people aren't just going to be standing right here waiting for you to shoot them. You know, they're, they're going to be moving around. There's going to be all sorts of things. So you definitely have to strategically place your specter. Now, obviously, whenever they're doing the pulse, they'll be able to see that as well. So there, there's, there's certain scenarios where this might be effective. But I think the uniqueness and the potential plays that you can, you know, make from this is, is pretty high. It's pretty, pretty big brain plays, right? If I were to put the Umbria Reconnaissance on the tier list, I would have to put this somewhere in, you know, a B to B minus. It's, it doesn't have exactly everything that I think that a team would need. Um, I think, you know, with a team with other strong characters like Bloom Technologies or Pinnacle International, I think it will be a very, very nice character to have, especially if they know how to utilize a lot of these different abilities. But overall, I think just as a character by itself, b minus to b so if you were looking for a character to play i think definitely by far the best character is going to be bloom technologies that's the best sponsor that you can play in the game currently in my in my opinion it has everything that you pretty much need not only for yourself but also as a team so highly highly important if you're kind of new to this sort of genre and you want a character that can kind of just get you in and something that you're pretty familiar with definitely go with pinnacle international it has everything you need everything that you would want to have you know it's a pretty good breath of everything and kind of gives you that same sort of bloom style of uh, of gameplay you know I, I i might even put this in a tier honestly and if you want to know you know a character that maybe you should unlock first or buy first with that are not in you know the uh characters already available definitely go with a mu robotics i think that this character pretty much has it all um, the Dazzler thing is obviously, you know, a little iffy, iffy bit, but I think the Hyperdome and the way that you can heal not only yourself, but your team with that patches ability is, are pretty cool. And there's no other character that comes even close to doing anything like the Hyperdome or patches in the way that it does. Uh, so pretty, pretty solid overall. So those three would definitely be my picks. And obviously if you don't have these four, I think the go-to would again, obviously be these three. I don't think that this character is necessarily worth playing really at all. Doesn't doesn't have a lot of things that really, you know, have a standing and lasting effect during the game. So any one of these three you'll be perfectly fine with. And if you were to go 
with a new character, the one that you would want to unlock, I would say definitely go Mew Robotics. After that, go to Umbria Reconnaissance and whatever you want out of these two after that. Guys, if you did enjoy this video and you thought it was helpful, please leave a like down below and a subscription always helps me out and my channel helps us grow and helps us learn more as a community. I'm going to be making more videos just like this over Spectre Divide and many other games in the future. So stay tuned for that. Guys, I hope you have a good day or night, whatever time you're watching this video. And I'll see you next time.